so we are starting uh, welcome friends to this uh, fifth webinar in our webinar series on media response to crises and we are delighted to have uh, two very distinguished uh, panelists today uh, amongst us uh, today's session is on reporting on children legal and ethical issues uh, consent and participation and uh, we are delighted to have the chairperson of the west bengal uh, commission for protection of child rights ms ananya chakraborty and uh, the senior most media educator uh, in in the country right now professor uh, sunil kanto behra sir from uh, tezpur university uh, without taking any uh, of your time i'll uh, straight away go out to our, uh, our uh, honorable president press club kolkata uh, for his welcome address for this webinar series organized by press club kolkata in collaboration with uh, unicef office for west bengal uh, sir thank you dr uma shankar pandey uh, good morning and welcome to all our esteemed panelists and our participants those who are watching it now and will be watching it later well friends uh, as a professional journalist uh, having spent uh, more than 3 decades uh, in the profession i have understood certain things that every day we need to learn or uh, recapitulate new things which are coming in journalism because as journalists we have to come across newer areas new frontiers every day even if we are visiting the old frontiers the 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 concepts and and the rules of the roads are changing every moment in our quietly well known uh, areas we visit regularly so we need to update ourselves and this is one area i would consider to be one of the most important as far as the practicing journalists are concerned and reporting on children is concerned i am delighted to have very two very senior uh, persons here those who are in the media education as well as media practicing and as well as uh, who are actually entrusted to uh, you know look after the child rights in west bengal i'm referring to all of you must be knowing that the honorable chairperson of wbcpcr west bengal commission for protection of child rights um onunna chakraborty uh as we call onunna or like that so we will be referring because she has been a journalist so once a journalist is always a journalist not only she has been a journalist she has been uh, while in journalism uh, quite uh, the quite uh, active in various social fronts uh, i think i'll not repeat i'll give that uh, i'll leave that introduction to uh, dr mashankar pande our moderator i'll not repeat the areas what she did while in the profession later uh, she is also a documentary well known documentary maker media academician she headed the department is the first head of the department if i am not mistaken of the sanjeevius college um, autonomous kolkata of the uh, mass communication film studies and allied departments uh, and uh, she has been an active member i think of of managers of the, I mean, the uh, office bearers of the iort I, I, uh, international organization of women in television there's a very esteemed organization which uh, comprises of the uh, ladies working in uh, the television across the world they have done a lot of works and she, as i said she has been an activist and now she is the honorable chairperson having a uh, heading a statutory body honorable chairperson of west bengal commission for protection of child rights so yes activist not only in various areas now his uh, her area is uh, concentrated and confined to a very very particular area which needs to be looked into very seriously this is the time we talk about children because we are uh, running up to the christmas we talk about santas but i think uh, the real santa in uh, embodied in journalist is taking care of the children not only during christmas but 365 days so that's why the pre christmas webinar is especially significant that we are taking care of the children uh wbcpcr has brought out this book uh, the pdf copy will, will be or has already been shared by dr mashankar pande or will be shared to all of you this is a very very handy it's a handy pocket book of, for the journalist uh, media and journalist on reporting on child rights 
uh, the consent that I cannot take the photograph of a child uh, on the street. Maybe uh, he or she has gone with uh, his or her parents for Christmas gathering outside. No, we cannot take the photograph. I need to get a consent from her, his, his or her parents. If uh, the, the identity, disclosure of identity, we know the IPC 228A, when we cannot disclose uh, the identity of a victim of a particular uh, problem in the particular nature of problem but uh, this is also the, all the children are guarded by this child rights uh, things that uh, we cannot just uh, re release the identity or identity does not mean the naming the person we cannot portray in such a manner that he or she can be identified all these things will be deliberated i'm extremely grateful to uh, this ananna chakraborty in spite of a busy schedule as the statutory head and chairperson of this body, uh, but out of a commitment and out of a love and passion for the journalism, she has been here to address us and Professor Sunil Kantabera. The Dronacharya of uh, media education, uh, I have been knowing him for ages, ages, almost uh, three decades. and. I have a very high esteem for him. He is not only a media educator par excellence, he is a, a good academic manager, academic administrator. I'm also connected to media education for a long time. So whenever I require any uh, administrative professional, like curriculum making, like uh, structuring of a course, Apart from teaching learning process, I always uh, go for his help and he has been very kind to come to West Bengal to help various universities. I know two to three already where we were together in building up the curriculum and all other, extending all other areas. Uh, he has been in Sambalpur University, uh, the first in uh, Berampur University, I'm extremely sorry, the first university of Odisha to have a journalism, full-fledged journalism department. He has been in Tejpur University as a professor, and now he is an emeritus professor there in Tejpur University, which is a uh, Tejpur University, which is a central university, having a beautiful campus and having a very high standard of teaching learning process. I have been there for quite a long time, and uh, this department has a C4D department uh, course, um, MA in. C4D communication for development. They have journal, uh, development journalism also in their curriculum, where uh, Shucharita Ma'am has also worked with them when she was there, the communication specialist in uh, Guwahati office in Assam. I also welcome uh, Shuch Sir, uh, uh, Sir, thank you very much for participating in this uh, webinar. And Shucharita Ma'am will know her passion, her commitment, and her uh, getting the work done from others. So that's why we all are together so uh, for our support uh, we are grateful and we are making this possible i would just say uh, before i hand it over to dr pandey for uh, further forwarding it with the proceedings i would say i believe that somewhere somebody in the world is doing some effort to making it happen like resources funds as well as the time so we need to make it fruitful. If we get a takeaway, yes, definitely we'll be provided with some takeaways. We are doing it, uh, we are trying to do it very professionally under the guidance of Dr. Pandey that the links are provided, certificates are provided, recordings are provided so that you can fall back. Uh, some materials like this will be provided. So you have some materials to listen to it later on when you require it to reuse it to uh, fall back on some uh, pdf material so i think if you are benefited by it then only our effort is successful so let us make it a success and the success depends much on the participants and definitely we have a very esteemed panelist i think whatever they say will be very very effective i am grateful that press club kolkata in its uh, 75th year, when we are celebrating the Platinum Jubilee being the oldest press club in the entire subcontinent, this opportunity has been given to us to uh, do this. And we are not confined it to practicing journalists. 
we have opened it to budding scribes, the media students who will be journalists in future, media educators and budding media educators, because formation is very important, and media academicians, because they will trend them. So anybody directly, indirectly, who is direct, who is indirect, we don't know. And we are giving a lot of stress on social media and others because the areas which are sunshine areas. We not, not only we cannot ignore, but we need to welcome and we need to see the uh, opportunities in those areas. So we are taking all the newer things into consideration. We want to involve you and uh, we, we, this entire effort will be fruitful if you are benefited. Thank you very much, Dr. Pandey. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, kind deliberation. And it's always so refreshing to hear from you. And uh, uh, there, there's so much of uh, input you provide, uh, e even in a welcome address. And uh, uh, we, are, we, are on we have been honored to being his student in uh, Calcutta University Journalism Department, 96 to 98 batch. And some of our batchmates are here every day to listen to sir and to others. Uh, uh, and I'm delighted to uh, report that uh, uh, even at this, uh, uh, after nine months of a webinar uh, day, uh, you know, we are having about 150 participants right now from all over the country, uh, you know, including very senior people like uh, Professor Dr. Ashwin Kumar and Professor uh, Sun uh, Punita Harne from Gujarat Vidya Peet and every, every uh, place, almost uh, all, all uh, uh, parts of the country. Uh, and uh, the credit for getting this uh, webinar on on ground and you know conceptualizing each and every topic and you know each and every resource person uh, that we can re reach out to is is uh, Ms. Chucharita Bardhan. Uh, you know she's been responsible for uh, conceptualizing this entire series and each and every topic has has you know there's been a lot of brainstorming behind the scenes and uh, uh, all credit to her for putting it together. So. Uh, uh, I, I would request uh, Mr. Charita Vardhan, Communication Specialist, UNICEF Office for West Bengal, to uh, kindly introduce today's session. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey, and uh, good morning to all uh, the distinguished panelists as well as our dear participants. Uh, today, I have a smile on my face because uh, this is a very important topic, not only because I work for UNICEF but for upholding the rights of children. And this has been close to uh, many of our hearts for a long while. And um, though we've been working on it very closely, and like Dr. Behra just told us in the morning, I have a colleague there who is working in the department has also a thesis on that. There has been a lot of body of work by many people, uh, which uh, range from um, academicians, media educators, to um, development workers, to activists, to researchers, and even um, somebody as important as the chairperson of a statutory body like the Protection uh, for Commission for Protection of Child Rights. Um, I will introduce the topic, but before that, I'd like to um, extend my sincerest appreciation to the chairperson of the West Bengal Commission for Protection of Child Rights, Anurna Chakraborty, for being here today amidst her very busy schedule that I am privy to myself because we've been working very closely together. But outside of that also, I'm grateful because she has been an advocate for child rights in the truest sense of the word. And I, I would like to um, recognize and acknowledge that. Uh, I am also very privileged to have with us, as Snashish, Mr. Snashish Shur said, whom we call Snashish Da, um, one of the veterans of media education in the country, Professor Behra. I have not had the opportunity of working with you, but I have heard so much about you from so many of your colleagues who have also happened to be mine over the last eight years, that it seemed almost that I knew about you and the kind of commitment and work that you have been doing. And I look forward very much in the coming uh, years also to work with you because we have a lot of work still to be done, both uh, on child rights as well as on uh, uh, media education. Uh, I um, would like to talk about uh, uh, the topic today, which is reporting on children, legal and ethical issues, consent and participation as being one of the most important areas of work for us. Um, and uh, going into 30 years, we've crossed 30 years since 
the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child uh, was uh, signed in November 1989, to which India is also a signatory. Uh, we know about the founding principles, um, which are the guiding principles of the convention, which includes the right to participation, which will be deliberated by all of you here. I will not take too much of time, but I'd like to just leave you with two or three thoughts on the ethical guidelines for reporting on children, which UNICEF came out uh, with a document already. We have uh, guidance from the press council. Uh, beyond that, we also have the protection of children from sexual offenses, POCSO Act, all of which comprise very important documents that practicing journalists need to understand today because the rights of children need to be protected. Every child, including those of survivors, and we need to understand how best to promote and protect them. Uh, I would want to hear from uh, the distinguished speakers before I, I come and share some of my insights. Thank you very much, USP, and look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Ms. Shishweta Bardhan, for your uh, inputs. And as I said, you know, uh, from, from every side, from the academic side to the logistical side to everything, you're, you're Support has been uh, absolutely essential for uh, uh, this this webinar series. Uh, uh, all of us uh, know Anunnaki so well, and she's uh, such a well-known figure. But it's uh, our uh, uh, duty to uh, introduce her at, at uh, the webinar session. So I'll just uh, make a formal introduction to uh, the Honorable uh, Chairperson, West Bengal Commission for uh, Protection of Child Rights, Miss Anunna Chakraborty. Uh, she uh, was. Uh, she first came into prominence in 1992 because of that incident at uh, Ravindra Sarovar uh, uh, Station, uh, where uh, uh, she was, uh, where she prevented an attempted kidnapping, and uh, this inspired uh, Ritu Porno Ghosh to make a movie on on her. The, uh, you know, and there was a novel Dahon, and uh, this this entire movie was based on that. Uh, she has over 20 years of experience in both uh, print and television media, as uh, Shneesiza said. She's worked with uh, the leading newspaper houses and television channels in both Calcutta and New uh, in Kolkata and New Delhi. Uh, she's an award-winning uh, documentary filmmaker, a gender rights activist, and an academician with specialization in uh, foregrounding the marginal and excluded voices of society. And she's had a long, long association with Mahashita Devi, and uh, I've been privileged to uh, have uh, conversations about uh, Mahashita Devi with her when she was at St. Xavier's uh, College. Her body of work comprises uh, uh, columns, to uh, television programs, documentaries, and it revolves entirely around rights of uh, women and children. She's worked extensively on trafficking in South Asia. And uh, in recognition of her uh, dedication to the cause of women, she was felicitated by the Department of Women's Studies, Calcutta University in 2001. Her documentaries are critically acclaimed and have been shown in festivals around the world, including the uh, United Nations. She's a former vice president of the International Association for uh, Association of Women in Radio and Television, uh, and she's also uh, a member of NWMI, Network of Women in Media and India. Uh, Media India. Before joining the commission, she was an assistant professor at St. Xavier's College in the Department of uh, Mass Communication and Videography. She is an alumnus of uh, Jadapur University, where she did her MA in uh, Comparative Literature, and she was uh, awarded a gold medal for special paper. And her commitment to the cause is, uh, uh, is so deep, I must tell all the participants that uh, just last night, she was discussing about, you know, the kind of things that she'll be presenting today. So thank you so much, Anunadi, for all your support. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know whether I deserve so much of praise. Both all three of you have been saying such nice things about me. I'm really thankful for that. Um, before I start, I must uh, tell you a story that happened with me, that something, a sin that I committed myself. Uh, about uh, more than 20, uh, 25 years ago, I was making a documentary on the children of sex workers. I used to live in Delhi at that time, and I was shooting extensively in uh, Shonagachi as well as in JB Road in, in New Delhi. At that time, there was no Child Rights Commission. I had no clue about any convention uh, that, is, that is there on children. I don't know whether there was any law or any uh, guidance guideline from the uh, court on how to shoot what to shoot what not to shoot so i uh, shot a lot of children in making the documentary and uh, it was quite an acclaimed documentary actually it went around quite a few places 
however after making the documentary and i shot all those children you know uh, on, on frontal camera through frontal camera after making that documentary and while after shooting that film uh, something happened to me i i thought that i hadn't i had done something which was not right it some it came from within and i stopped making documentaries for maybe another 15 years i didn't make a documentary uh, i felt that it is an intrusion into uh, somebody's private space so we have to understand how to you know we have to rethink how to make a documentary uh, we have to also rethink on how to use the camera because the camera gives you a position of power and you can uh, you know somebody who has a camera will obviously be more, more far body who is being interviewed because we choose the angles that we shoot in and uh, we decide what to keep and what to leave out it happens in documentaries as well as news so therefore with response with power comes responsibility we have to understand that we must shoot or we must report responsibly and that is doubly uh, important when we are shooting women and children actually when we are shooting anybody but especially when we are shooting women and children because we believe they are the most vulnerable sections of society so uh, after that when i again started shooting which was on um, uh, on, on trafficking in south asia this, this i started in 2005 and 6 and i worked on it for uh, about uh, maybe 7 years i was i was working on it i i i was very very careful i spoke to many of my friends who have been working on um, on ethics media ethics and so then i had extensive workshops with my camera person my sound recordist and my editor uh and i told them how to shoot and how not to shoot to make sure because you know this is a topic when you are shooting something like children of sex workers or when you are shooting something like um uh, anything in the red light areas the natural tendency is to make it sensationalistic so I, I i had to speak to them to you know to to practice restraint that how will we shoot something uh, how will we uh, you know how to shoot it sensitively instead of being sensationalistic so when we discuss child rights today when we discuss reporting on child rights today this is precisely what uh, i uh, try to uh, profess this is what exactly what we try to advocate even that handbook uh, that uh, we have produced it was actually the work of mohua shatra who is also a journalist who is working with us uh, but she discussed we had long discussions on this and we I, I, you know this is uh, and what i felt is that had i had a handbook like that that when i shot that documentary on children of sex workers i would not have made the film that way i would have been far more responsible and sensitive about the whole thing i was sensitive but i think uh, i think i should have been more responsible because those images will remain and when the, even when they grow up uh, the images will remain you know they will they will, people will know who they are they might know who they are so we have to be very very careful um so when I shot the next film, which is the uh, on understanding trafficking, I did not have that sense of unease at all. And uh, in fact, a lot of people have told me I, this film has been extensively shown in Europe and uh, England, uh, America, and even in India. Everyone, uh, whenever I have shown it anywhere in England or, or uh, Europe, people have told me, the audience have come back and told me, that it is so sensitively made you know you you don't look down or you do not pity the 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 uh, the survivors or the victims it's as if uh, you know you are you you are your heart is going out to them you make people uh, more uh, more compassionate towards them rather than show them you know you don't feel pitiful so this is very important for me 
that something that I learned uh, through a very important, through a very big mistake. Uh, that was a learning experience. And I felt that I must share this with everybody and I must share the ethics of reporting through a media for all reporters, television, radio, and print. So I, so I would like to start uh, showing that if uh, um, 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 Uma Shankar, if you can help. Yeah, just, just, just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, so we're, we're just going to start it. Yeah. yeah. Please start the slide. So I would uh, just like to. I would like. I would only show the handbook. I would like. I would like to speak on the handbook. I think yeah, yeah. that would be the most important part. Yeah. It will just be there. Uh, yeah, yeah. No problem. Actually, there's a massive problem with the server today, so we had to uh, go through uh, another uh, Let me space. See. Let just, me just... see if I can. Uh... It's there. It's there online. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So as you can see, that uh, why do we have this reckoner? As I mentioned to you, that to help you become responsible journalists. You know, thing is, we have seen. I have seen. Uh, that there are reporters who want to be responsible journalists, but they don't know what, how to report often. They're, they're confused. And the other thing is that even though they want to report responsibly, uh, there are market forces to make the report sensationalistic, to show the face of the victim, to reveal the identity, etc., etc. So uh, I will come to that part later, how we are handling that. But uh, to start with, we are... Uh, we are starting with the best interest and all decisions regarding the child shall be based on the primary consideration that they are in the best interest of the child and to help the child to develop the full potential and not to uh, the primary motive should not be to uh, raise the TRP, help the television channel raise the TRP or the uh, newspaper to sell more. That should not be the first uh, uh, first priority. So as you see on the screen, while reporting on children, the media must respect the dignity and the privacy of children and their rights. This is very, very important. While reporting, say if you are reporting a POXO case, um, which is a child, case of child sexual abuse or anything on children, but especially POXO cases, you cannot reveal the name of the child. You cannot reveal the place of identity of the child. You cannot reveal even the uh, identity of the parents of the child. Because at the moment you, or even if it's happened in a school, the person, child is studying in a school, you cannot reveal the name of the school. Why? Because if you reveal any of them, then it narrows down uh, the scope and it, it, it narrows down uh, the identity. You know, it's, it becomes easier to identify the child. So no matter how tempting it is to tell uh, to, to tell the audience that you have it you have all the information please do not report it because that is against the law it is unethical as well as it is against the law <clears throat> this is against the jj act so the child must be made aware that he or she is talking to a journalist and the purpose of the interview must be explained to the child beforehand so a, a reporter, especially a television reporter, can't just jab uh, a mic into you know on the child's face and start asking questions. The child has to be first briefed that this is what I'm asking you, and this will be shown here. And are you okay with it? This is very very important. The child must know what the child is talking, um, you know, who the child is talking to, and why. What will be used? How that interview will be used? So an interview of a child should always, un unless under exceptional circumstances, take place in a private and safe place. You should not interview a child, you know, uh, say a child has come out of a police station after uh, or, or, you know, is, is, has come out of a place of occurrence and everyone can watch the child. You should not interview the child then and there. The it, there has to be a, a privacy. It has to be done privately. And the child should willingly 
participate in the interview. There should be no coercion. This is very, very important. It's very easy to coerce a child. The reporter or the photographer has to take written consent from the child or the legal guardian or in their language before an interview or taking photographs or name. So first of all, you cannot uh, show the name. You cannot show their interview. You cannot show their image. I'm very happy to say that after we came out with this uh, booklet, uh, the media has responded wonderfully. You know, it, it is so heartening that, uh, you know, it's so easy to blame the media. But when we actually gave them this handbook, they actually started calling us up, including uh, uh, Sneha Shishda. She, he, even he actually called me up one day that, can we show this? Can we do this? So there have been constant telephone calls from newspaper channels, from newspapers, from television channels, asking us that, you know, we saw in the handbook that we can't do this, we can't do that. So can we uh, do this? Can we show this? Including from all the leading newspapers in the city I and mean, in the state, which is very, very heartening. So when once you, you know, once you give them a positive uh, a yardstick that this is what you can do, what, what, what you cannot do, then the media also learns to be responsible. So uh, in, under any circumstances, there are certain areas where you cannot uh, reveal the identity of the child, even if, even if the child uh, uh, says yes, or if the parent says yes, you cannot. Like, for example, if the child has been trafficked, or if there has been, um, uh, it is a POXO case, or there's, it's a case of a HIV positive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are many things. If you if you go through the handbook, you will see that you know you can. There are many things uh, where there's no question of having consent or no consent. In fact, there has been a recent uh, a few months ago there was a, uh, a, a, a court order that you cannot even show morphed faces of a child of a POXO victim. You cannot even show the morphed face, leave alone showing the actual face. So in case of uh, use of interpreters, the child statement must not be distorted. So if we are shooting or if we are taking, uh, if we've gone to an area, interior area where the child does not speak the same language and you are using an interpreter, we have to be very careful that we do not distort the language of the child. And children must not be in such dresses and poses that could be interpreted as suggestive. You know, we often see that in, in uh, especially in, in some programs, if you see any dance programs, you know, on, on TV, those dance competitions or sometimes even in music competitions, but especially in dance competitions, the kind of, uh, ki the kind of clothes they are made to wear, even small children, and the kind of body gyrations that they are made to, you know, they make, it is definitely not childlike and it is not acceptable. It is not desirable. So if we can move on to the next, uh, next page, please. Yes. This is very interesting that the camera must be placed at the same height as the child and not top down. This is, this is a language of cinema that we use that, you know, when you put the cam, place the camera on top, or on, on an upper angle, and you shoot something, the person you're talking to is a little below, then that is a power position. Uh, so usually, uh, when you are talking to an equal, or we are in an equal relationship, then uh, the idea is that the camera and the person should be in the same height. Uh, and as I mentioned, that while reporting on child abuse, journalists must maintain confidentiality of the child, even after the publication or telecast of the news. So you cannot, uh, you know, uh, the case has happened. People have forgotten about it, but you must not bring it up later. You must. It is very important to uh, uh, to to maintain confidentiality. If even if you are tempted, think think about it. It could have been your child who has faced such a trauma. Would you like your the child's identity to be revealed? No, right? So you should not do it with another child. We must not do to one, one child what uh, you would not like to happen to your own. OK, now involvement in ch of children in news programs, documentaries, 
this is what I was taught, telling you about that in programs you will find that children sometimes, in, especially in the dance program, the dance competitions, uh, you will find that a child is dressed in a certain way and the child rights perspective is not ma maintained. It, is, it becomes very, very commercial. And media must ensure that the doc consideration is given to a child's rights to privacy and to prevent the child from being exposed to anxiety, distress, trauma, social stigma, risk to life and safety, and further suffering in relation to reporting, broadcasting, publication of news programs, documentaries, etc., for children. And I had violated all of this when I made that documentary because I, I was not aware of the rules and I was not sensitive enough. Let's, let's face it. I hadn't thought enough about what is going to happen, what kind of impact it will have on the child. So on the uh, rights, on the Convention of the Rights of the Child, um, uh, Shuchurita had already, already mentioned there are several rights that the child has, uh, which includes uh, the right to express uh, uh, the, right, the right to grow up safely, the right to safety, etc. If you can move to the next uh, slide, please. So when we say that, uh, so anybody under the age of 18 is a child, according to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. So a child should not face, if you look at Article 2, it says non-discrimination. But the moment you reveal the identity of a child, you are opening the doors of discrimination. Because the child will be, you know, will be identified, people will talk about it. The child might be discriminated in school, in, in the neighborhood, in the family, in the within, you know, relatives. So therefore, we cannot do it. We cannot reveal the identity of the child because that opens the door for discrimination. And it is, not, and if you look at Article Three, therefore, it is not in the best interest of the child. So while reporting anything or while making a documentary, whether you are making, whether you are, it's on print or on television or on uh, new media. We have to be very, very sure that we are uh, not uh, doing anything which is against the best interest of the child. Everything has to be in the best interest of the child. Even if it is not there in the law, just use your senses and make sure that it is in the best interest of the child. If you can move to the next page, please. OK, so they have the right to be protected. They have the right to live safely. They have the right to have. Uh, they have. They have the right to have state support, which we provide to them, and so on. If you can move to the next slide, please. And it is also important to recognize the rights and responsibilities of families to direct and guide their children so that they grow and they learn to use their rights properly. And helping, uh, helping children to understand their rights, but using their rights responsibly. That is very, very important. Okay. The next slide, please. The child has a right to survival and development, and the child has a right to live. So the government should ensure that children survive and develop in a healthy manner, right? So, and, and the other very important thing is that, you know, according to the JJ Act, every, Indi every child living in India is, comes under the JJ Act, not every Indian child. So you don't have to be an Indian to be protected by the JJ Act. The moment a child lives in India, you come under the JJ Act. I remember I went to the Supreme Court to fight a case for uh, Rohingya children. Rohingya children who are there in West Bengal and who are facing a lot of problem because they are in the sheltered homes and they can't be released uh, because they don't have, you, know, they, you can't send them back to their country where they will be butchered. But here they are in a, in a, in a, in a kind of a, enclosed atmosphere they would like to be reunited with their parents and so on so 
I, I took up their cause and I to, went to the Supreme Court and I, I told the Supreme Court that even if they are not Indians, they are living in India. And according to the JJ Act, every child living in India comes under the JJ Act. So therefore, it is, this is very important to understand that every child living in India around you, whichever uh, nationality they belong to, whichever community they belong to, every child below the age of 18 is protected by the JJ Act. If you can, uh, uh, and another thing, separation from children. So uh, separation from parents, a child cannot be separated from the parent. The JJ Act says that it is the right of the child to remain with the parents. This was also another point that I proved put to the Supreme Court. Okay, and respect Article 30, 12, it's very important, Article 12, respect for the views of the child. <laughs> so when it, this, this also pertains to how we report them in the media. Should we only make very sensationalistic headlines and sensationalistic news? No. We have to understand that the right of the child includes respect of the views of the child. Will the child want to be reported that way? Obviously not. Can we move to the next slide, please? OK, and the next one. Yeah, this is uh, a freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. So, OK, so this is basically uh, what is there about the, the, the media. This is uh, this handbook is available with us, uh, uh, you know, the hard copy, and it is also uh, available on the in the soft copy. Uma Shankar has the soft copy. I've sent it to him, and uh, this, you you know it it can be shared by anybody. It must be shared and used by anybody, not only by practicing journalists but also uh, academicians who teach journalism. It will, I believe, it will be a very useful handbook. And uh, now, if you can come back to the screen. Let me see if we can stop screen sharing. Yeah, so we realized that uh, 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 only telling them to be responsible may not be good enough because, as I said, there are market forces. And these market forces need to be countered. Sometimes, even if the reporter wants to be responsible, the reporter is forced to uh, make it sensationalistic. So that is why four years ago, we started the media awards, the Responsible Media Awards, which is known as the Shishu Sri Award. So we give uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the first prize, uh, 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 an award, to a reporter in print, uh, television, radio, and new media in Bengali and English uh, for the best and for the most responsible reporting on child rights. And that has had a very good impact, very, very, very positive impact. We have been, the number of entries have been growing every every year. And uh, and I must say, I have to say that I have to acknowledge that media has taken this very positively. And the, the, the uh, kind of reporting that we used to see five years ago has changed now. Reporting about children has become more responsible. And not only that, the reporting on children has increased. People have started writing about child rights. There have been, there are large sections now on child rights when report when reporters write about child rights or the report on child rights on television. It especially on print, it has really, really grown. And I'm really grateful for that that the media took it up so positively and they, they, they responded so positively. So thank you, media, you know, whoever, uh, all, the, all the media people, media persons who have been doing this, I would really like to thank them. From uh, this, uh, it, is, uh, it is really wonderful that how uh, reporting changed. I could, I could actually see the change happening uh, from the first year to now. The kind of reporting I don't see another um, any more uh, those of those sensationalistic headlines. I don't see any image uh, being revealed. I don't see any name being revealed. And we told them that you can't even reveal the name of the school or the locality. And even that has stopped completely. 
so yeah, so that is what uh, it is. And this is how it should be. It should continue like that. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And now if, you, and if anybody has any questions, I'm available for that. Uh, so much, uh, Anuradhi, for, for your uh, brilliant presentation. And all, as always, it's so helpful to everybody. And uh, this entire uh, uh, chat box is filled up with, you know, uh, thank you, ma'am, and ma'am, so helpful, and so on and so forth. Uh, Ms. Shrita Bardhan, would you want to say something? Uh, no, maybe I'll come towards the end, but I'm uh, grateful that Anuradhi also brought up the Juvenile Justice Act and... Um, that is also in perspective uh, because of uh, the rights of children, which it upholds. Uh, and a very important issue about enforcing uh, um, uh, the provisions uh, rather than only having it as a guiding principle is a very important component. I'd like to come to that later. Thank you. So uh, we've had uh, participation, as I said, from all over the country. We've had uh, very senior uh, media practitioners and educators uh, there's Anita Parihar, ma'am. She wants to get in touch with Anuradhi. She's a, a educational media practitioner herself. Uh, uh, there's one former student who wants to find out whether cases can be filed against those particular shows of, of you know, the yes. uh, programs you said where they. So if you could yes. elaborate on that. This is a question by Deepik Kaur. Yeah, it can be. Uh, in fact, um, I'm. Uh, in between, we had written a few. We had sent a few show causes to some newspapers. This was three years ago, uh, maybe four years ago, and uh, we told them that you know you have to, you cannot report like this, and you must publish a corrigendum after that. That you know it wasn't right, it was not the right thing to do uh, to a number of newspapers, and uh, then they stopped co it completely. They stopped do doing those reports completely. So we did not actually take them. We did not uh, file a fire against them. We first sent them a notice uh, uh, from the commission. And even only that notice worked. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Anandabhi. This, this has great. been really, really uh, uh, regarding the filing of the FIR. If you go through the POXO Act, Article 23 talks about all this uh, procedure for media, and if they publish anything against the ethics, uh, um, against the um, rights of the children. Then there are several punishments prescribed yes. for the media professionals there in Article 23 of the POXO Act. Yes. So Absolutely. very likely anybody who feels, um, um, say, and that is uh, they are not uh, very rightly reported or uh, something against the children's rights, something which uh, undermines the uh, dignity of a child uh, while reporting the child abuses or anything, then they can be punished. The POXO Act is very clear, Article 23 of POXO Act clearly mentions about all these things. That's right. Thank you. Uh, uh, there has been, as I said, participation from all over the country. So there is Dr. Saida Afshana. She's from the Kashmir University and she wants to uh, you to share the documentary link if it's available. So if it's there, we can uh, share it with the... Uh, uh, Understanding uh, trafficking? Yeah. Understanding trafficking, I don't have the link. Uh, uh, okay, I'll try to put it up. I, I will. I will try to do that. And uh, the uh, wonderful booklet you've shared, it has already been put up on our uh, files there on the uh, uh, you know chat box uh, besides okay. the uh, screen. It's there available for our participants. We'll be sending it to them over email, by WhatsApp groups and whatever. And uh, you know, uh, by the evening it will be there in uh, with all the media educators of the country uh, and our uh, budding journalists as well. Uh, thank you so much, Anunadi. I mean, uh, it's, it's always uh, such a, ple a pleasure listening to you. Uh, uh, if possible, you can stay on, uh, uh, Professor Behra. Uh, I, I have the proud privilege of introducing Professor Behra. He does not need any introduction uh, in the uh, media education fraternity, and he is the most respected. And I mean, uh, you know, with with, with uh, all honesty, he's one of the most respected media educators and researchers in the country, uh, and he's been working for the last uh, 39 years. Uh, born in 1955, Professor Behra started teaching way back in 1981. And uh, he's the senior most uh, professor in the country right now at the moment. He has had a long list of achievements to his credit. And uh, I can only talk about very few things. I mean, and as I said, uh, we, we are all very small to uh, talk about Professor Behra here. Uh, he doesn't, uh, as I said, uh, he's, he's, uh, he has been there at almost all uh, you know, universities uh, which has communication department in the country. 
Uh, he started his job as a media educator in Barhampur University, Odisha. And after that, he joined Tezpur University as a professor of eminence in uh, 2016. And, uh, uh, you know, for, for our benefit, he's still working. So he is a working professor uh, to this day. Uh, during 2002 and 2004, Professor Behra had came uh, to, on deputation to Tezpur University earlier. And that is when he established the Department of Mass Communication and Journalism. And uh, Tezpur University has grown up to be one of the uh, uh, you know, premier departments of the country. Uh, he has supervised 27 PhD scholars in mass communication and journalism and seven MPhil scholars in me, uh, women's studies as well. He's published two books and 40 research papers in uh, international and national journals. Uh, he was the dean, head member, uh, academic council, member senate, director, distance education, director, adult and continuing education. He has a lot of uh, administrative experience as well. Uh, he's associated with about 40, 55 universities all over the country. Uh, he is uh, uh, in various uh, academies. Uma Sankar, it's uh, too much. And so just, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> okay. Just Thank 30, 30 <laughs> seconds, sir, just a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> so he's uh, uh, traveled to Australia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, etc. He's associated with NAC as a coordinator. And in 2004, uh, since 2004, he's actively associated with the UGC and the Union Public Service Commission with very, very important uh, uh, confidential jobs. Thank you so much, sir, for agreeing to uh, address us today, despite, you know, such a big, busy academic and administrative schedule. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Umar Sankar, for your uh, very generous words uh, about me. I don't know whether I deserve those things or not, but I must thank particularly the Press Club of India and, of course, Sucharita Ji, uh, the UNICEF Kolkata for uh, this uh, webinar series. I, I move across the country, but uh, uh, honestly speaking, for the first time, I saw a program, an academic uh, program on uh, media by the Press Club of Kolkata. No other press club in the country have ever organized such a webinar series. They organize uh, national press days and all those kind of things. But And also the press club is involved in publication of books and uh, monographs. And that's wonderful. I congratulate uh, um, uh, Sneha Sissi and his team, Umar Sankar, for um, these kind of academic discourses that they do. And UNICEF uh, certainly, I will congratulate them for uh, <coughs> helping and sponsoring this uh, organization. I hope this will continue in future <coughs> and I continue to participate. Now, <coughs> now I was listening to uh, uh, Ananya Chakravarti, the, the chairperson of uh, the West Bengal uh, Commission for Protection of Child Rights. Very rightly, she has talked about uh, the 10 um, ready recorner, 10 point ready recorner about the ethical reporting on children by the media. And also she, she talked about uh, the 54 articles, a bit of 54 articles of the UNCRC, which was uh, um, passed in uh, 1989, to which about 196 countries have become signatories. But when I look at the um, UNCRC um, recommendations or the articles or the rights of the child, I can club them into um, five categories without going into the 54 articles. I will, the rights relate to first life, survival and development of children. Second, it relates to protection from violence abuse or neglect. Third, that is uh, education that enables children to fulfill their potential. Fourth, be raised by or have a relationship with their parents. The fifth one, which we are discussing today, is uh, express their opinions and be listened to. Do we have, have we made provisions for space for children in the media? Have we created space for them? Or have we given them enough space to express themselves 
not only creating space in the media, but also giving them uh, a space to express themselves as independent um, uh, children. Now, when we talked about all these things, I will, before going to what media people uh, should report and how to report, um, I will ponder about the kind of coverage that we have in media. Prior to 1989, it was a welfare approach. When we thought about children, talked about children, it was a welfare approach. But there was a gradual shift after 1989 when the UNCRC uh, happened. We moved from a welfare approach to a rights-based approach for children. Now, rights-based approach. Now, when we talk about a country like India, can we have a completely rights-based approach? Can we um, think our children as independent? Can we think our children as uh, exercising their rights, which happens maybe in America? But in India, we always have a protectionist view. We always try to protect our children. To go further, we, we at the uh, during their childhood, we decide what should they wear. We decide to which school they should go. We decide with whom they should meet. We decide what channel they should uh, watch. Everything is being decided by the parents. So there were uh, two models, two schools of thought that are um, prevalent here today. One is the child liberation model. Child liberationist model, which uh, that uses concepts like individualism, uh, independence, self-determination to um, argue that children should be freed from adult control. That is child protectionist model, liberationist model, which talks about children should be freed from adult control. Is it possible? Second um, model is child protectionist model that considers children as male and dependent on adult care. Now the UNCRC has very rightly was developed from both models. All those uh, children's rights were developed basing on both these models. Child rights form an integral part of uh, human rights as uh, every child is entitled to civil, economic, social, political, and cultural rights. And when you look at the uh, UNCRC, uh, the three P's, provision, protection, and participation, those are very, very crucial. We must make provisions or provide the children with necessities of life, maybe the food, shelter, clothes, everything, education, Protection, right to be shielded from certain acts and practices which are detrimental to their interests, to their dignity. Third is participation, where they should have the right to do things, express oneself and um, have an active and effective voice in matters affecting one's life. So, Provision, protection, and participation, they are the major three P's which we need to look at. I'll come to the uh, media report, but I have summed up. When you talk about the, um, we had uh, uh, after 1989, in uh, 2000 and 1999, there was an Oslo conference. The Oslo document was uh, um, there, I will talk about it, but there were summarized way, there are 12 rights of the child, 12 rights, every one, every child has the right to be born well, born well, second, every child has the right to a wholesome family life, third, every child has the right to be raised well, and become contributing members of the society, mean they have a role to contribute. Every child has the right to basic needs. Basic needs here means balanced diet, adequate clothing, uh, sufficient shelter, 
and proper health care. Similarly, the right to access what they need to have a good life. They should have the right to education. They should have the right to play and enjoy their youth. They should have the right to be protected from danger. <coughs> they should have the right to live in a productive environment. Productive environment when we talk, well, you see, there are a lot of conflict zones. There are a lot of problems during disasters, man-made or natural. We must, when we look at the plight of the children there in conflict zones, that's not a productive environment. That is an environment which is regressive in nature. That is an environment where children do not have the minimum basic uh, uh, needs, forget about rights. So we will have to look into that. Then um, we say that right to be cared for in the absence of the parent or guardian. If children do not have their parents or guardian, the society should take care of them, them and have the right to good governance. And lastly, have the right to freedom and peace. These are the 12 basic rights of the child basing on which we are discussing uh, 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 all these things. Now, before moving into the reporting on children, I will give you a very brief idea. I thought uh, everybody, uh, everybody is knowing, but regarding the child population, the child characteristics of the child population in India, we have today about 472 million children Around 37% of the total population uh, are uh, children. And uh, <coughs> then we have about 12.7 uh, um, million working children. 12.7 million working children. And as we know, children are our most valuable resources, yet we are uh, um, allowing them to be child labor. We are uh, allowing them or to be um, open to all hazardous kind of uh, activities. And the one good thing about the um, India is that the infant mortality rate has come down today to 26.6, which was uh, more than 150, more than 180 at time. It has come down to 26.6. That is a very positive sign. The deaths under the age of five has also come down to 32.9. Now, when we talk about children, I will classify the children of India under three categories. One is the urban children who have the facilities. Second, the rural children who are not having the urbanized facilities. They have lack of facilities in terms of uh, education in terms of health care, in terms of drinking water, in terms of many other things. And the third category is the street and destitute children. Street and destitute children, here uh, that's very, very uh, segment, important segment of the children in India. Those who do not get any sort of care, any sort of uh, um, productive measures or uh, efforts by the government. There are about 18 million street children in India. Means they live uh, um, uh, under the open sky and they do not have shelter. They have abject poverty, lack of awareness of educational opportunities, livelihood uh, problems. They have uh, forget about their hygiene or health. They are completely vulnerable to exploitation and they are matured beyond their age. These are the kind of uh, um, uh, children we have. Now, with these things in mind, if I uh, go, go a little beyond, one in four children of school going age is out of school in India. One in four. 99 million children have dropped out of schools, according to, I am not have, uh, gone into 2019 data, but 2011 census data I am talking about. There are 12.17 million 
child laborers within 5 to 14 years of age. India has 33 million working children between 5 to 18 years of age. Because in terms of child labor, after 14 one can work but in an artistic field. One is free to work in cinema, one is free to work in all those kind of things. And surprisingly, every day 150 children go missing in India. According to the NCRB report, 150 children go missing in India and kidnapping and abduction is the largest crime against children in India. If you take into account the uh, number of crimes that happen and the progression of crimes against children, you will be surprised to know there is a 500% increase in crimes against children from 2006 to 2016. They in which rose to 1,6958 crimes against children in 2016. And in 2019, it has increased to 1,48,185. In 2017, every day 350 crimes against children were happening. 350 crimes against children every day, which rose in 2019 to 406. 406 crimes against children every day. And when I look at the graph, abduction and uh, kidnapping, 49%. Then comes rape, uh, 18%. Rape and murder becomes 20%. Assault on, or insult to modesty of girl children, about 11%. There are, there are several uh, kinds of crimes that are perpetrated on children in our country. Now coming to the legal aspects, we have POXO Act, we have uh, Juvenile Justice Act of 2015, which uh, talks about uh, uh, how to protect the children against their rights. We have also IPC, there are several sections of IPC, say uh, section 376, 354, uh, then <coughs> section 509, uh, uh, there are many sections of IPC which protects the uh, rights of the children and which protects them against the um, uh, crimes against them. So legal provisions are there and ethical guidelines as I have uh, heard that been given by the UNICEF as well as ethical guidelines for reporting on children has also been given by the Press Council of India. But when I look at the kind of reporting that is happening in the mainstream media, it is very shocking. I'm sorry to say this. Uh, now, Amu Joseph, you all must be know, I'm quoting her. She says that media today reflect little active awareness of the fact that they have an important role to play in enabling children to learn about the highly complex world they live in. She observes with regret that children's voices are missing even in reports and articles on matters directly related and relevant to them. So, <clears throat> and another um, um, researcher, Ratna, she observed that mainstream media generally present three main sets of images about children. One, violation of children's rights through insensitive, sensational reportage and misrepresentation. Second, denial of spaces, space for issues related to children. Third, denial of space for children to express their own opinions on matters that affect them. Now the problem here is, uh, there is also, uh, there are many uh, gems in, in, not only in India, even outside, they have the opinion, they have studied, where they point out that great deal of stereotyping has been done, that marks the portrayal of children in mainstream media today. 
as powerless victims of abuse, conflict, crime and poverty or children seen as charming and entertaining accessories to the adult world, mostly in advertising world. And uh, there are also observations regarding portrayal of children in media. When children do appear in news reports, it is generally as victims of crime, as victims or survivors of abuse, violent conflicts, disasters, and socio-economic deprivation as recipients of charity or beneficiaries of welfare schemes. So that is the uh, system in which we operate and our mainstream media uh, operates. Now, how do we come out of this? How do we, when we talk about uh, um, uh, the uh, giving space to children and when we talk about the rights of children, when we talk about rights, it is not only about reporting on the uh, offenses uh, or the uh, abuses on children. It is not about reporting abduction only. It is not only reporting about rapes and murders. It is not only uh, reporting about other uh, um, um, crimes really, um, as mentioned in JJ Act or the POPSO Act. So what is the way out? The way out when we say uh, Ananya Ma'am has already talked about uh, the um, uh, guidelines, the guidelines my simple question here, how many of us, not here in this webinar, if you take a, a study, make a study, make a survey, how many, what percentage of the population are aware of the rights of children? What percentage of adult population, they believe in these rights? Do they have completely a protectionist view of their children? Are they not uh, uh, unconcerned about the, um, um, the disadvantaged sections of the society, that is the street children? Are we doing enough? No. Now, I came across a very, very important, uh, um, what I will say, you must have heard about Balak Nama. That was a kind of... Uh, newspaper it is a newsletter for and by street and working children that was way back in 2002 um, um, a chetana a delhi based ngo they organized a training uh, program for the street children where 35 children attended and the motto of that um, training workshop was enabling street children to tell their own stories. And 2002 they worked and July 2002 they started this uh, um, thought of uh, publishing a newsletter by the street children speaking about their problems, speaking about themselves and Balak Nama was born to ensure voice of street children in society and systems. 2003, 3rd and 4, 4 to 14, it was published in Hindi as a quarterly um, um, journal and then 2014 and 15, it became a monthly and from 2016, it is being published in Hindi and the translated version of English. Why I am saying, if you look at the system, we say that the illiterate children cannot speak for themselves. The illiterate children do not have the capacity to think about their issues, to think rationally, but they have proved us wrong. If you look at the kind of publication system of Balak Nama, they have an advisor, they have an editor, they have one sub-editor, they have seven reporters, and they have... 30 Batuni reporters. Batuni means they neither know how to write and how to read. They are illiterate. Batuni means they will only give you hints about the stories. 
they will give you lead of the stories where the other seven reporters will translate their leads into stories of their own now the batuni reporter so this is one kind of uh, uh, experiment that has been done in delhi and uh, secondly i i am sure sutrita ma'am must be remembering there was an initiative child reporter initiative by the uh, unicef which was taken up in india in 2005 and uh, in several parts of the country we had that initiative in odisha also we had we selected in the koraput which is considered which is considered to be the most uh, underdeveloped district there there 10 schools were selected and out of which 100 children were selected from those schools they were trained how to write a news story what are the uh, news value and how can they uh, speak for themselves and uh, all those things they started publishing a newspaper a, a local newspaper published a supplement for them uh, known as ankurodha uh, the sprouting ankurodha and uh, that was a kind of uh, initiative taken by the uh, unicef the child reporters as children in their schools they started reporting how to write a report how to write a story all these things they were trained and later on what it was seen in uh, koraput they had started sending initially letters to editor focusing on what they think about even the budget what they think about politics what they think about uh, all these things were uh, uh, being published in the odia newspapers today and another when we want to give space another initiative was the children parliament children parliament you know that is a, a global experiment in every country in every state we also uh, uh, give them an opportunity give children opportunity to become the child parliamentarians where they can discuss about their issues where they can discuss about uh, their problems how to address their problems how to um plan how to um, say that they how you can also develop strategies to deal with their issues and they will realize uh, how as uh, to function as parliamentarians how the parliament functions in a way they become very active and aware uh, citizens of the country so i will not go into the reporting reporting again it is very limited to uh um, crimes against children we must move beyond that now what have we done as media to promote children's rights the child rights the promotion instead of simply reporting on the um uh, crimes against children rather i will have an opinion that as media we must um become socially responsible and try to uh, give space to children we can have a one page space where we should not publish only the uh, art drawings of few children and few poems of children but we must ask them to write on issues uh, which are very very relevant to them on the child rights on the child issues on issues of uh, national importance we must give them that space and that will develop their um, ideas that will help them in contributing something for the society even as a child so that much of space that much of leverage we need to give so the media i know the media uh, again as uh, from an information carrier it has become a commercialized vehicle and again if i say it has been our mashian refeudalization of media today and when we move from a missionary mode to a commercial entity to a our mashian refeudalized entity then perhaps media the mainstream media will not be able to provide that much of space to children because they are unproductive in nature for them but nevertheless there should be uh, some element of ethics some element of uh, 
um, uh, we as media persons should think about children and try to give some space, maybe in a week, one page where they should be asked to write on issues of uh, importance to children, on issues on uh, education, health care, then uh, uh, about uh, the politics of uh, the country, about uh, um, say the problems with the neighboring countries, about uh, COVID-19, about the economy, all the things. How do they think? We must allow them to think. Their cognitive structure will develop. That's how we can help our children to become responsible citizens of the nation. I, I haven't talked much about uh, how to report because everybody knows that. We have the guidelines, we have the ethical guidelines, Madam has already talked about. We have also the guidelines by UNICEF where they, they have talked about how to interview a child also. And we have also the guidelines ethics, the code of ethics by the Press Council of India as well as the POPSO Act, I was talking of Article 23 of the POPSO Act, which very um, categorically talks about no person shall make any report or present comments on any child from, from any form of media studio or photographic facilities without having complete and authentic information, which may have the effect of lowering his reputation or infringing upon his privacy means a child also has a reputation. You cannot lower his reputation. A child also has a right to privacy. You cannot uh, venture into, um, uh, you have to think about right to privacy when you are reporting about child. So um, uh, with this, I will uh, uh, close uh, my remarks. And um, I am, uh, as Uma Sankara said, I am always a learner. And I have never taught my students. I never consider myself as a teacher. I always acted as a facilitator of learning for my students. And I am still a learner today. Thank you very much, Umar Sankar. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And it's always so inspiring to listen to you. And I must inform the participants that uh, this is a topic that sir did not say that he will speak on that. Uh, and knowing sir, you know, we knew that we could take this liberty with him. We uh, said, sir, please speak on this. And it speaks so highly and it's so inspiring for uh, younger uh, scholars also to realize that, you know, he did so much of research and he did so much of study to uh, make this presentation. And uh, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, time and for your deliberation and uh, for your support, because uh, this is something that, uh, you know, we take on with us. And this is something that we aspire to be. Uh, I mean, I must thank the wonderful participants. We have been uh, ha we've been having very encouraging participation uh, throughout the series. This is the fifth in the series, and every time we've been having an average of around uh, 150 participants at uh, different times. Uh, we've had, as I said, participation from from Gujarat, from Maharashtra, from Odisha, from West Bengal, from Kashmir, from South, from all over, and. Uh, there are, there are students, uh, for example, from uh, uh, Gujarat uh, Vidya Peet. There is a uh, Shama Kamdar. Uh, she's been asking questions on a regular basis. Uh, Punita, madam, uh, she's been there for all our uh, webinars. There's Geeta Bamsai, madam, uh, who's there. There's Shubhra Dev. There is uh, uh, Shashwati Gangopadhyay. There is uh, Juhita Maji. She's been there always. Shotto Bruto Paul. I'm just taking the names of uh, people who've been there uh, supporting us uh, on a daily basis. Atula Chauhan. We've had students from KIT University on every webinar, and they've, they've been extremely uh, 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 you know, uh, actively participating in these webinars. Uh, Srijaya Chatterjee, our colleague from here, Professor Dr. Ashwin Kumar. Every webinar, you know, he's been so supportive, and he uh, uh, keeps on uh, encouraging us. Animik, uh, Anamika Jha, and then uh, Anita Parihar, madam, as I said, uh, uh, Sitar Banerjee, Dipi Kaur, Shubhoshri Jana, uh, Purabi Bhattacharya, Charles. We are inspired by you, Umar Thank you so much, sir. And I've been very uh, privileged to have my former uh, students and my former classmates as well. Uh, uh, Ms. Nirubhama Ghosh, she's been there almost every day, you know, for our webinars. And this is so uh, so inspiring that, as uh, uh, Mr. Snyasi Sur said, we do it for the participants. And uh, uh, we will also be, uh, as you know, we will be um, uh, uploading it on YouTube and it will be available for, for later on as well. And this will be such an important resource. Uh, 
uh, apart from the handbook shared earlier we've also uh, just uh, mr sirta badan madam has shared this uh, for us the uh, convention on the rights of the child the children's version of it this uh, four page uh, booklet is there on the uh, uh, files are uploaded there and it will be available to uh, uh, every uh, it will be provided to uh, everybody's email everybody who has uh, uh, registered for today's events and we will be sending out these uh, for uh, them as well we have about uh, four or five minutes left for questions i'll just read out uh, two or three questions together and I'll request anurag the answer to take up uh, you know which there's one by uh, shottabrot paul he says that uh, child abuse is not uh, uncommon in schools these days but guardians fear that exposing them may, might harm the future of their wards and that's why they prefer to change schools rather than you know taking them on or to uh, you know bringing them to light so even even if media wants to show it the guardians don't want them you said that no we we want this to be uh, not to be highlighted so uh, how uh, may I, may i take yeah, yeah please ma'am please on oh, no, another no, yeah yes uh, uh, no you know it's a myth that uh, child sexual abuse happens in schools it of course it does happen in schools but the actual cases of child sexual abuse happen at in the family within the family amongst close relatives and which is why and most of those cases are not reported in fact the cases in the school are reported most of them are reported because the school is the other you're not bringing in the family there when it happens within the family the child is silenced uh, uh, they because nobody wants the family to be disgraced so the family the court and court family honor becomes more important than the child's trauma and uh, often when this happens the child grows up with that trauma and uh, and uh, uh, remembers it throughout Uh, the child's life even till the last day and that can create a lot of personality disorders and so on and so forth so uh, you're right when you say that parents don't want to inform the police but if that is that happens usually uh, with when things when uh, these poxo cases happen within the family but when it happens in schools it usually does get reported which is why uh, because only the school cases get reported uh, and that is the reason why Yeah, uh, we have this notion, or we have this, uh, yeah, this idea that only uh, this happens mainly in schools. It doesn't happen in schools. In fact, very, very, very few cases happen in schools, and when it happens, it does come to light. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for this uh, clarification. Uh, the, I'll just uh, club in two or three questions uh, together. There's one by Anamika Jha. She says uh, she is concerned about the sensationalist, uh, sensational content on social media, for example. Uh, uh shama kamdar she is uh, concerned about uh, uh, you know the young beggars uh, on the child beggars at, at uh, uh, traffic lights and all and uh, she says that there's not too much on uh, in the media about it uh, shreya kundu wants to uh, ask about uh, how to reach out people who are not aware of their rights uh, braja mohan sahu uh, he he wants to find out about uh, whether there's a guideline for ideal parenting uh, uh geeta bamsai madam also you know she sp- talks about the gender based disaggregated data uh, for for you know uh, uh, beyond child rights as well uh then there are uh, a few more but i said uh, as i said uh, uh, i'll just limit it to that there's one by anushka dhaka and uh, one by jagroop singh balra as well but uh, i'll leave it to that aparna khanna ma'am is also uh, present there in the participants so uh, sir would you want to take that uh, I think this will be better dealt with by uh, Ananya ji when we talk about uh, <laughs> now this. Uh... I would like to actually uh, like to take on that question, which I really liked on whether there is a handbook on ideal parenting. Uh, in as I often say that uh, half of uh, India's population was born to save marriages. and uh, the marriages are con- continuing because once you have a child you have to continue with your marriage no matter what so this very misconstrued notion that once you have a child your marriage will start working this needs to go and uh, what happens is that the child keeps on suffering has a life long of suffering to bear uh, because the parents obviously don't necessarily get along after the child is born so the parenthood has to be responsible and i'm really glad that uh, this question was asked there is no handbook on on uh, uh, responsible parenting we really need one and in fact we have been getting so many cases 
of children writing to us or child children calling us up saying that their parents are fighting so much that they're not able to study or uh, uh, let, writing letters to us saying that uh, either the either of the parents usually the father has left them um, and uh, he's not even paying the fees school fees or you know is paying any maintenance so they are uh, you know in dire straits etc so because you know he's, he's attached to somebody else and so on and so forth so we started receiving so many of such cases that we uh, brought out we took a, undertook a year long study last year in 2019 and brought out a book a very um, important book on uh, the impact of domestic violence on children it was a dipstick survey and it was uh, this report was actually partly funded by unicef and uh, it, the people who the, the ngos who worked on it uh, it was all being all bengal women's union uh, action aid uh, jay prakash institute um south kolkata hamari muskan so there was one chapter entirely only on children of red light areas because family for us is not just the patriarchal notion of a home homophobic family you know it's it's a, any child who lives in a house with either of the parents is family so the kind of uh, the trauma that the child goes through in a red light area is also very important for us so this came out in the form of a book this was written the our re entire report was written out by uh, jadavpur university department of uh, women studies it's a very important book according to us and you know you can write to us and we can send you the book it's called the impact of domestic violence on children so yes we realize how important it is for uh, parents to understand what parenting is you should not have you should not have a baby just because people before you had a baby or because everyone is asking you when are you having a baby when are you starting a family as if you know uh, and because it is your duty to have a baby are you ready for parenthood are you mentally ready for parenthood are you emotionally ready for parenthood are you financially ready for parenthood so i i feel that uh, couples who consciously choose to remain childless to be the most responsible parents because they know that they are not in a position to bring up a child they choose to remain parentless to to remain childless i think that is the most responsible thing to do instead of bringing a child into the world because so and so has told you that it's important to have a child or because your family is pressurizing to you to have a child when you're not actually ready to bring up the child that is the most irresponsible thing to do and yes it is very important to bring out a guidebook on uh, responsible parenting what we did was on the basis of that book we sent out recommendations uh, to the schools that in your diary the school diary that is brought out there should be one page for parents and during the admission uh, the parents should be asked to uh, sign a paper a form Uh, mentioning that i will not do these 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 things in front of my child i will not uh, show any violence in front of my child that i will not you know we will not expose the child to any form of violence physical or verbal because of our interpersonal relationship and so on so uh, this is what we had done but i think it should be taken up more seriously more constructively and maybe actually come out with a handbook on pa parenting maybe you know uh, shujorita and i can we can talk about it later on after this but i'm so thank you so much there are so many questions that uh, uh, um, uh, that uma shankar put up about child beggars yes we are working on child beggars we are working with the police and the vagrancy department uh, to at least start with one small area in calcutta and make it try and make it beggar free as some of you may be aware that begging is a racket Uh, you know when you see children begging on the streets it's not because they don't have enough to eat but they are being used as beggars they are often stolen and kidnapped and used as beggars so we are trying to work on it but we are treading on very dangerous grounds uh, because we are going to take on uh, criminals uh, hardened criminals to, in doing that we're not afraid but you know we are we have to tread very very carefully yeah that's it thank you uh thank you so much anand uh, sir sir uh, regarding the reporting of uh, 
um, child abuse in schools. I will tell you the NCIFB records say that the child abuse cases, if you take 67% of the cases are happening within the family. Their children are being um, or, um, or a sort of an insult to their modesty or girl children are within the family. And sometimes uh, um, the child fears to talk to her parents and at times when she talks, the parents never believe that. Absolutely. And those goes unreported. Only when in schools or other public places, if something happens, that is getting reported. Absolutely. Uh, because maybe because of the cultural system. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will say another thing, a very positive thing. We say that it goes unreported. But if you look at the data, the reporting of cases against um, and crimes against children has increased, the reported crime has increased from 18,967 in 2006 to 1,48,185 in 2019. Yes. These are, I'm not saying the number of crimes, I'm saying these are the reported yes. crimes Absolutely. against children. Absolutely. So, there is an awareness, we have achieved something, people have become aware, people are now reporting and uh, they want to punish, so they want to uh, get out of it. So there is a long way to go. We have to, as um, Ananya Mama said about the domestic violence, and particularly this is uh, reflected during the lockdown period of COVID-19. There, there is a uh, huge increase in domestic violence and the children were the worst sufferers. So in these kind of crisis times also, we need to think about uh, the children okay. and their safety, their security. We had started, that's we had how started, we have. Yeah, we had started a helpline, sir, uh, of, of 21 right. doctors, uh, in, which included well, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, counselors, gynecologists, uh, pediatricians. Uh, 21 doctors volunteered for us. Mm -hmm. So they gave their uh, mobile numbers and they give certain times, you know, from this time to this time they could be called. So children as well as parents would call up for uh, uh, during these times, during the COVID time. That's a very nice initiative, madam. That's mm -hmm. these kind of initiatives need to be taken up and Sutarita ma'am is there and she will have to guide us and help us in such initiatives because UNICEF is involved in all kinds of activities. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for, for uh, all these inputs. And uh, uh, me and Shucharita, ma'am, we were having this discussion yesterday. All these things are so intellectually stimulating and there are so many new things to learn from this series yeah. and so many takeaways that, you know, as, as organizers and as participants, we've been having a wonderful uh, uh, exercise over the la since uh, the last uh, two weeks. Uh, this is the fifth in the series. There are eight more to go after this. And I'm sure... Uh, this will continue. Just a uh, small housekeeping information. The uh, feedback link is right there on the top of the chat box. So please complete the feedback link for your certificates. Please write your name and your email correctly because that, the name is what will appear on the uh, certificate and the email is where it will be sent. Again, I thank a lot more of my colleagues. That is Dr. Vidhu Bhushan Das from uh, Kit University. He, he's online and he's been there and his students have been there all the time. The colleague, uh, one of my colleagues from the commerce department of my college, uh, Professor Shomita Banjisi, is there, uh, and of course uh, everybody else. Uh, if I've missed out on certain names, I will uh, uh, read them out the next uh, webinar again. Uh, so, uh, time for us to have the final words from uh, Mr. Chirita Bardhan, as I said, the person who conceptualized and who uh, th thought of, you know, this uh, particular uh, topic and this particular series. Uh, so, uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Chirita Bardhan, ma'am. Thank you very much, USP, and thank you both uh, Anunna and Professor Bera for that very reflective session. And I will not conclude. I have so much of thinking and thoughts going on in my mind. It's, a, it's going to be a quite a stance, I would say, for, for continuing this reflection. And I have learned a lot, um, and I would like to acknowledge your contribution. There is much to be said. Not all uh, can be said right now in a couple of minutes, but I just want to touch upon a few key things. And I think the 
mention once again of the UNCRC, which is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is important because we've crossed 30 years. This is the 31st year and India is a signatory to uh, this uh, convention. They have ratified um, it and therefore uh, has a commitment to ensure that children are uh, being provided the opportunity to practice the rights. And I would like to thank you to pause for a while on the word practice. Uh, therefore, we need to understand it in, in that context. I'm very grateful uh, to Professor Behra for bringing in um, the, the 12 uh, rights, uh, which, which has all of them, because it is important uh, session like this to talk about each one of them although we did mention about the guiding principles but talking about each right uh, give us gives that perspective about what the entire span of rights are and i'm also grateful to bring up this uh, the, the two-sided coined nature of the rights or models which have been practiced which is the liberation model and the protection model and i would like to emphasize on this because recently with the commission, we, while working on um, online safety, uh, we've had this discussion, which was uh, convened by the chairperson herself. And we had um, um, a big stakeholder group comprising definitely of uh, uh, legal experts, uh, cyber cell, uh, CSOs, but we also had children apart from parents. And one of the things that one of the child said there, you know, resonates with me. But we do, yes, parents need to protect us, but they don't need to be overprotecting us all the time because we need our spaces also. We need our privacy. We, we need to be able to practice our confidentiality. So that resonates very much within me even now. I think Anuna also mentioned about uh, some of the tenets which are important are confidentiality, privacy, non coercive environment. Many times, it, that would even include these emotional blackmails that many times probably happens, um, maybe unwittingly, unconsciously, but it happens. And the very important aspect of consent. We have somewhere forgotten to seek consent from children for things that we decide for them, whether it is at home or whether it is at the parliament or whether it is at any international uh, convention. And uh, you will increasingly, uh, to all participants, realize how much more that has become important because decisions are not taken only for adults, whether it is by the government or whether it is in a school or a family. And there have been several initiatives, some like the ones that Professor Behra mentioned about child reporters, where, they, where there, there is a skills transfer uh, where children are uh, you know, they, they, there's a kind of a learning for them to be able to express themselves, to talk about their own concerns, their own issues, and that is so much more important. Uh, these uh, couple of um, uh, states going into the elections had already convened uh, a, a very series of very important discussions where children's voices were brought together. I w uh, and I would like you to, again, uh, respect and think about brought together, not by CSOs themselves. Children actually participated, they demanded, they listened, they came up with a charter of demands. And I would also like in this context to respond to Professor Gita Bamsai. I very have my highest regards for her because I worked with her for a little brief um, while uh, in one of the initiatives. What we did is we went into going into seven consultations that we had every time we did a check and balance to see how inclusive was the entire process whether we were able to bring in as many children including children of migrants including children of sex workers including children who came from families affected uh, by hiv all kinds and if we missed out anywhere we extended the focus group discussions to include all of them and i agree and reiterate that having voices from every child irrespective of where she belongs to, is equally important and core to the rights of children. And this is something we need to be able to continue. Professor Behra also mentioned the very important aspect of participation beyond violence. Yes, uh, I think we are grateful to the commission 
in West Bengal for being able to recognize journalists who have been uh, conducting and facilitating responsible journalism, which is very easily said, but very difficult to practice. Many times temptations have to be addressed. And I'm saying this responsibly because I have facilitated and have uh, with, with a lot of uh, civil society organizations and uh, uh, the University of Rajasthan here, media fellowships and mentorships where media who have been awarded, senior uh, media people who, who were um, shortlisted out of a committee of even more senior media academ uh, academicians and um, uh, professionals, they also said that many times we, uh, in order to gain TRPs, in order that more people are privy to the information or want to read the information, uh, we, we are saying things probably which we now have learned cannot be said. And which is why it is important to have the legal provisions too. We have had guidelines, but sometimes we also need legal provisions to make them enfor enforce, uh, enforceable. Um, finally, I think uh, one thing needs to be said that um, not all is very uh, challenging, uh, as even Anima mentioned, and there have been initiators, there have been people who have response, responded positively, including media, and going into the coming years, we should be able to see more children's participation because the government of India has also made provisions for Bal Sabhas. Like Gram Sabhas, there is a mandate to have Bal Sabhas. And this is something that many of the development workers practicing child rights, advocating for child rights, have been saying for a long time. The children need to be participating in different several structures of the democratic process. Whether it is at the Gram Sabha, whether it is at the Assembly, whether it is at the Parliament. I think a very good start has been made, both in terms of child rights and child advocates. It's for many of us to come together continuously to keep both the spirit going and ensure that practice, child rights is practiced, not just read in the documents and not just there on the convention. Thank you so much. You have to unmute. Uh, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sharita Vardhan, for your thoughts. Uh, as always, uh, there's, there's uh, so much uh, to take away from, from uh, your deliberations. Uh, I now have the happy privilege of uh, delivering the vote of thanks on behalf of the uh, Press Club Calcutta. Uh, since our uh, uh, president is uh, not here at the moment, I'll do this on his behalf. Uh, I must uh, uh, thank uh, on the, uh, I mean, I must thank her doubly because uh, she has uh, she is here you know for for the uh, second webinar of the series and uh, her her inputs have been so very vital and so very important because someone who's so committed and so passionate about uh, these issues when uh, and it, it's so visible for everybody and despite a very very busy schedule uh, she has she has supported us in this manner thank you so much anunadi for your support for this uh, uh, webinar uh, uh, Professor Sunil Kantabhar, as I said, uh, he's been uh, been keeping very busy with uh, webinars at his own place, at his own university, apart from the uh, other academic and administrative work and all. And he has been so supportive, as I said, that uh, we even decided the topic for him. So for a uh, professor of his stature to give that kind of a support is something that will stay with us for, for, for very long. And the kind of research he put into the entire thing is, is uh, so very refreshing for all of us. Thank you, sir, as always, for, for, uh, for your support uh, to, to our, uh, all our uh, you know, requests. He has always uh, uh, helped us with our requests whenever we've asked him. And of course, uh, without Mr. Sharita Bardhan and the UNICEF Office for West Bengal, this would not have happened. And at this intellectual and at, at, at uh, this kind of uh, uh, conceptual level, I mean, this is so very important to have... Uh, someone you know who uh, thinks at that level and it, it helps the organizers uh, a lot in uh, you know pro uh, carrying this forward i must thank the wonderful participants i have taken a few names i'll again you know uh, thank uh, uh, professor ashwin kumar professor punita halne from gujarat vidya peet uh, uh, dr bidu bhushan das from kit uh, uh, professor anita parihar from uh, mumbai and all our you know uh, colleagues uh, shottabrato paul and everybody else from from our college and uh, adjoining colleges and as I said, uh, my, my classmates as well and my former students, uh, 
uh, three uh, very important people who have been working behind the scenes. And uh, today, there, as uh, you might have noticed right at the beginning, there were some issues, but they handled it beautifully well. So uh, uh, all thanks to webinar coordinator uh, Shreya Dev for, for, for her uh, hard work and you know everything that she has put into this. Uh, uh, to our IT coordinator, Devayan Bhaduri and Sanjali Ganguly, to our uh, creative team headed by Shekhar Vajpayee and to everybody else. Uh, we'll be back in two days' time for uh, another webinar on... Uh, uh, it's a part of our development journalism series. As you could understand, today it was on the child's rights series, so we are having four uh, major topics. The next one will be on uh, evidence-based reporting and storytelling, journalism in the digital age, and we'll have... Professor Surbhi Daya from IMC and Mr. Shubhujit Bhakti, a very uh, senior journalist uh, from our state. He will be there addressing uh, the participants. So see everybody uh, everybody on uh, Wednesday, 23rd December, same place, same time. Thank you very much. Before, before we wrap up, one big thank you to uh, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey. Um, yes. He's not only a uh, very accomplished associate professor of Shurendranath College for Women, but um, and uh, academically well known internationally in the global circuit. And he has made his commitment uh, so strong towards this entire initiative. I definitely have to both congratulate him for this very successful endeavor that we've been able to manage so far. And we hope that we'll be able to do so in the remaining ones. Thank you very much, USP. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. He's our academic ambassador. He's our academic ambassador Thank you, um, of India, uh, representing all of us globally. Absolutely. And he functions, you know, um, and the kind of work he's also doing in his college, continuous webinars and continue on, on themes of uh, relevance. That's a very good uh, thing that you must be doing. I thank this club, uh, Sneha Sisji, Uma Sankarji, Susarita Ji, and I am also really uh, grateful to Ananya Ji for uh, listening to her and uh, thank you very much. I am always there whenever you need me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will do it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll end the show. Thank you very much. Thank you.